Hello. This is uh, Navneet Singh. I'm a professor of uh, pulmonary medicine and a thoracic medical oncologist and the faculty in charge of the lung cancer clinic at the Postgraduate Institute of Medical Education and Research in Chandigarh in India. Uh, I'm happy to be here at the ESMO Congress 2025 and uh, uh, to highlight uh, what I would be doing here uh, would be chairing a session uh, on Monday, the 20th of October, in which uh, I'll be engaging with an expert, Dr. Paula Ugade, and we would be discussing about the distinctions between resectable and unresectable non-small cell lung cancer getting blurred in today's era where you have very highly effective uh, systemic therapies. Uh, in the past, what has happened is that uh, there used to be very clear-cut definitions between what was termed as resectable lung cancer and unresectable. And that was when the systemic therapy used to be only chemotherapy. However, with the advent of immune checkpoint inhibitors, uh, as well as targeted therapies for patients with no driver alterations and targetable driver alterations respectively, these newer systemic therapies when added to chemotherapy have become very highly effective and therefore one could argue that what used to be termed as unresectable earlier on would now become or come in the ambit of resectable disease. So I invite all of you who are here at the ESMO Congress to come on Monday to the Heidelberg Auditorium and listen to us discuss and debate the distinctions between resectability and unresectability. Uh, moving on to what I do, uh, I have been the uh, convener com coordinator for my institute's thoracic oncology group, which has uh, representations from various departments and disciplines involved in the diagnosis and treatment of lung cancer. And so to highlight a couple of things which we have um, found to be of immense importance in the last couple of decades. The first and foremost is accurate staging. Now, uh, staging patients accurately makes a very big difference because if you're able to accurately stage the disease, you may be able to offer curative intent treatment like surgical resection and or definitive chemo radiation uh, for early stage or locally advanced disease. Uh, and or this accurate staging is dependent upon, number one, uh, not relying upon just the scan findings itself. Uh, we are aware that in, uh, in areas of the world or countries where you have a very high prevalence of granulomatous disease like tuberculosis, you can have false positive scans uh, in the term of lymph nodes being picked up as enlarged or as being reported as FTG avid. However, in the absence of sampling, the uh, imaging is uh, only uh, suggestive. It is not confirmatory for involvement. Uh, so apart from staging, the other thing which is very important is uh, biomarker testing. Now, biomarker testing has really revolutionized the way we approach and treat patients with uh, non-small cell lung cancer. To start with, this was only applicable to metastatic disease, but we are now aware that in the last five years or so, uh, the ambit of molecular testing has been expanded to both locally advanced disease as well as early stage disease. And bringing this uh, into more perspective, uh, EGFR mutations are the commonly detected targetable oncogenic driver alterations. Their prevalence is also very highly variable. In uh, the Western Hemisphere, which is North America and Europe, this represents only around 10 to 15 percent. However, as you go east, uh, this percentage starts to increase. In South Asia, for example, this percentage is around 30 percent. And as you go even more east, especially the areas of China, Korea, Japan, Taiwan, etc., this can rise up to 45 percent or even 50 percent. Similarly, second most common, uh, common targetable driver alterations like ALK fusions, uh, they are in the tune of 3 to 5% in the Western Hemisphere. 
but uh, in South Asia, this percentage can go up to 8 to 10 percent or even 11 percent. And uh, it is very important that all eligible patients are tested for these. Uh, and once a testing report uh, comes out as positive, they are offered the appropriate targeted therapies. Now, the number of targetable oncogenic driver alterations has also been steadily increasing over the years. Earlier, it used to be only EGFR and ALK, but we now know that there are at least uh, 9 to 10 different uh, targetable driver alterations, uh, which includes EGFR, KRAS, HER2, uh, the MET and BRAF mutations, as well as four uh, fusions or rearrangements, including ALK, ROS1, RET, NTRK, and so on. And this list keeps on increasing. Apart from this, PDL1 expression is also of very uh, relevance because for patients in whom a targetable driver alteration is not found, PDL1 status determines whether patients should be offered immunotherapy or immunotherapy with chemotherapy. And therefore, uh, the aim uh, of all of this testing uh, is to determine the best approach. We need tissue for this. And therefore, when sam tissue samples are being acquired at diagnosis, uh, the, it is the responsibility of uh, the, uh, uh, the clinicians as well as the radiologists and the pathologists to ensure that adequate tissue is collected and press processed appropriately to ensure that whatever needs to be tested in a given patient uh, is tested. Obviously, with the ambit uh, or the arrival of liquid biopsy, some of the limitations of tissue have been removed. Yet, we have we do not or we cannot do away with tissue altogether as of now. And tissue and liquid biopsies are now complementary to each other, both for uh, the detection of uh, diagnosis of the disease, detection of biomarkers, as well as following up patients on therapies. So... Uh, my message to um, all uh, clinicians and uh, individuals with an interest in thoracic oncology, especially lung cancer, is that uh, make sure that all eligible patients uh, get tested. And for this, whatever needs to be done should be done. And that would include doing liquid biopsies if necessary, re-biopsies as and when indicated. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.